Hey, this is Mike Lindsay from Battle MX. I'm joined by my coworker here, Jamie Guida, Dark Side. Uh, we are talking about Super Motocross. Uh, even though all the announcement stuff was made yesterday, I think with some of the interviews, some of the excitement a lot of us had about how the formats could play out, there ends up being a little bit of confusion. The the basic principles of the format aren't that hard to follow, but some of the jumbling around, I think uh, a lot of us are guilty of with the excitement behind it may have confused some of it. So we're going to kind of go back through it, uh, go through really what it is, uh, what the points are, how you qualify, all that stuff. Uh, before we get into it, Jamie, anything that stood out to you on uh, this announcement? Or I'm still not sure if Super Motocross is two player or just one player. <laughs> I'm just trying to go with SMX yeah. for now because I can't, I still have not figured out how to program it to say it correctly in my brain without a mess up, which I don't feel so bad considering Daniel Blair blew it in the, uh, the yes, intro. He did. That was great. Even the, the, the professional himself, uh, screwed it up. So <laughs> yeah, I don't feel so bad if we mess this up for a little while, but we'll, we'll try to be a little more professional here, but I think for the rest of this, I'm going to call it SMX for the rest. All of right. This yeah. I, I'm excited. The name isn't, the greatest, but like Sean said, you know, what, what were we going to call it? Right. I mean, it's, it works. We'll just have to get used to it, but I'm excited. The most I'm, I'm excited mostly, and I'm sure you'll get to this is the TV package, a five-year deal. where We know what we got. I, I'm excited about that more than almost anything. Yeah. And I think we'll cover that, I guess, first, because it is the most uh, simple thing to put out there. Uh, your super cross schedule, your motocross schedule, all the races, and the new Super Motocross Championship, the three rounds at the end of the season, are all on NBC, our NBC affiliate networks for the linear TV side of things. And all the streaming will be through Peacock. What's what's Peacock? Four ninety nine a month, five ninety nine a month, or whatever. Yeah, it's uh, cheap. nice and consistent. Uh, everything's going to be on there. No jumping around, no hunting. I said maybe a little bit with the the TV on the linear side. We'll see how much of it ends up being on like USA versus NBC. Um, versus their, their TV networks. Um, there will probably still be a little bit of movement there, and we'll, we won't see those until we get closer to race time. But everything will be live and available on Peacock. And if you are a worldwide uh, uh, viewer, if you're outside the U.S., I know Supercross still said they're going to have their Supercross streaming package for because there are some limitations with Peacock on, on different uh, geographical locations. And I think that's available in like 145 countries or 150 countries or something they said. Um, I think we'll wait to see outdoors if there's anything like that. There there might be something pop up there. But if you have NBC um, and Peacock, you're you're good to go. Everything's one home, five years, no problems. I love it. I love it. No, Hopefully no more bashing on all the chat rooms and not be able to figure out where the race is or nothing working. Peacock works. We should be good. Should be good. Uh, the actual schedules themselves, we still have a 17-round Supercross series that was announced with an East and West Coast Regional 250, uh, two shootouts this year, and back to having the three Triple Crowns, but those those championships in their entirety are still what they are. They aren't really affected by SMX. Uh, outdoors was slightly affected. They did drop one round. We've gone from 12 rounds to 11 rounds. Uh, we basically have gotten rid of the second round Apollo, which... Look, that's 30 minutes from my house in my backyard. <laughs> I'm not even going to cry about that. Um, I don't think anybody was super thrilled to go there twice in a year. So, yeah, it sucks to us outdoor, but we still have 11. Um, and a lot of them being really, really good legendary tracks have been on there forever. Uh, again, those championships are not affected other than two less motos per class. So a little bit different for stats, but not dramatically. Um, those championships are, are secure. So now we get into how do you qualify for SMX. So uh, think back if you're an old school guy, the old Grand National Championship, if you weren't around those eras, uh, it's a combined points thing. So to seed yourself in to SMX in the 450 class or the SMX 250 class, there is two separate classes, you have to be top 20 in combined points between Supercross and Motocross in your class. So if you've raced 450 Supercross all season, 450 Motocross, and we throw your points together, even if you're like a K Clayson, and if you're 19th in combined points, you qualify for SMX. Uh, same thing, 250 guys, they ride one region, they ride some outdoors. They, If they're inside top 20, they qualify. If you're a rare situation like Christian Craig this year and you rode one series or one bike size indoor, one bike size outdoors, your points cannot be combined. So you have to somehow go top 20 and combine points off only one series each, which I think I looked at math like Christian would have off just his outdoors. 
and I think just off his super cross points, but he would have been seated really low. He would have been seated like a like a twelfth or a fifteenth in each class, but yeah. he he had options. Um, and if you're somebody that has points in both classes and you're qualified in both classes, you can pick coming into the race. You cannot race both. <sighs> you have to pick one. Um, but yeah, and then the last part is if you are twenty first to thirtieth in points in either of your class. You can show up at these SMX races, but you have to race your way in. So the top 20 are seated straight into these main events. Still a 22-man gate. We got two gate positions we can fill. So if you're 21st to 30th in points in 450 or 21st to 30th in points in 250, you can show up to the races. You can try to race your way in on those last two spots or LCQ. The last person who can try to do that, this is going to be a very rare occasion. Let's use Eli Tomac as an example. Let's say he comes out, wins the first two to three races of the season in Supercross, does a knee or something, misses all of Supercross, misses basically all of outdoors, doesn't have enough points, isn't even top 30 in combined, but has a win on the board. If you have a win in either series, you can try to qualify in. Yeah, I like that Yeah, because it does give those guys a chance. I think Malcolm maybe was yesterday at the press conference talked about that. You know, he got injured, missed some races. It gives you more motivation to come back a little sooner like some guys may not come back for the last couple of rounds of a series normally they'll just wait for the second series to start or the next whatever the next series is and now they, they want to come back and get some points so that they are seated better now you don't have to race both indoors and outdoors right. to qualify as long as you have enough points so you know going into this next year yes we have eli tomac on a on a super cross only deal I don't foresee that changing that much. I think he's pretty aware now of the rules and stuff. Uh, as long as he has, now I say, it, let's say again, he gets hurt early in SX. Maybe he does come do outdoors to qualify in if he's really interested, but there's a high chance he would qualify off only supercross. I mean, we sure. know as long as Eli stays on the bike all season, he's going to be in the top. It's going to probably be like a him Anderson Sexton kind of thing for the, and Webb for the championships. I mean, you would think that Eli, no matter what is going to be, top three if not winning that you know he's title favorite so he wouldn't have to do outdoors um i joked with webb about that and he said you know it, it would make him look at it and consider it more um depending on how his season goes indoors you know it, he said the number one focus is win that supercross title but you know this definitely said brings up okay maybe he thinks about doing he said a couple yeah uh, just to help him out a little bit uh and the reason we talk about that is it is sort of a points reset, but it's not. Um, if anybody is like watch NASCAR, you know that when they go into their playoff series, uh, there is a points reset, but there are bonus points handed out for certain things. So they've kept it pretty clean and simple. The points going into SMX uh, start at zero, but you are awarded bonus points based on your combined uh, total haul. So again, we'll use Eli Tomac as the example this year. He won Supercross, won Outdoors. He had the most combined points. He would be the number one seeded rider. They're going to award him 26 regular season points, basically the equivalent to a Supercross or an Outdoor National Moto. Mm -hmm. So he's going to get 26 points uh, for being the number one seeded rider. Uh, I think Chase Sexton was number two on combined points this year. Um, he It's either him or Anderson. He would be seeded number two. He would get 23 points. Anderson, if he's the number three seeded rider, he'd get 21 points, et cetera, goes down to 20th, which I think hits two points for one point. Uh, so you do start the series with something. And it definitely, you know, if, if you're Eli, he does SX only this year, he would have seeded around eighth when we did the rough math. So he might start the series with like 13 points or something. So yeah, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to maybe if a guy gets laying outdoors, it's doing SX only. It, it might make a guy rethink, oh, maybe I line up for a couple of races I like. I can start seated, like maybe two positions higher. Um, I don't think it'll make a dramatic difference. Again, like and it kind of comes down to the next talking point is the points you score at the race. But uh, where are you with the the starting points? What do you think? I like it. I, I think it. It kind of it gives you, again, it gives those guys motivation to come out to races maybe they wouldn't have raced, right? Like the, the guys that are doing Supercross only, they may show up. They may get a few extra points. I think they're going to start thinking, ooh, I need to hit a couple of races because those couple points for the seeded position to start the playoffs is very important for the big money at the end of the season. So those you just said it might not be that big of a difference, but it, it I think a couple of points is going to be huge. I think the, the big one you'll see a change is – some of your 
some of your guys like your your Logan Carnals, mm-hmm. Starlings, those kind of guys that are SX only typically right now, and they get a pretty decent points haul in SX. Yeah. Is how much does it make them rethink at least hitting a couple out their nationals? How much do they start weighing the points? Because we'll get into it further. They didn't announce the individual purse yesterday. We do have a general idea of it. And based on what we understand, between the three SMX races and the championship pool at the end, like a lot of those, those again, your your Clayson's, your um, your car now is your guys that have been kind of SX only last couple years, maybe hand out their national too. Hey, right. It might promote them to try to get in because they will, they could potentially make, if they get into the top 20 seated and they automatically make it in all three of these races and they start, even if they get 18, 19, 20 each of these races, I think they're going to make more money off those three races and the championship pool combined in the rest of the purse money they make the entire year put together. Okay. Like it could be a, enough of a haul that it'd be worth those guys lining up for a couple local nationals. Um, so we might get to see some talent uh, that we haven't seen race nationals in a while might promote more guys again to, to race all year. So I know a, a big thing for your hardcore fan is they don't want to see nationals go away. They don't want to see it affected. Um, this is honestly one of the things I feel like that's been done in the sport. First thing it's been done a long time that it, it will make, you know, will help people be a little bit more pro pro motocross. Like, yes. Want to go yes. It. Yes. Um, and not turn it down as easy for, for SX only deals. Not to say SX only deals are going to go away. I still think, you know, some key guys are, <clears throat> are just going to be like, yeah, you know, as long as I can seat in off supercross, not a big deal. Um, but it, it could change that a little bit going forward. And I was actually very surprised talking to like an Anderson a web, but you know, actually Anderson was one of them. He's 29 years old. You know, we've talked, there's a lot of 29 year old guys right now. Like your, your Craig's 29 or 30, Malcolm Stewart, all those guys seem genuinely excited. Uh, I know we, we talk a lot about, oh, there's too much racing, but having this at the end of the season with as much money it's in it i don't mean this badly against riders you throw a lot of money in they're willing to line up as long as the risk versus rewards are i talked to a few guys about it yesterday it's one thing when it's just general racing season yeah and the championship's kind of out of reach by the end you're just racing for fourth and fifth there we can not much purse how much bonus but when these three races come up um with all the money they're packing in it it makes the rest worse war. It's like those guys doing the Paris Bursies and stuff are like, Hey, this is going to be cool, exciting, fun. Uh, it's a little different. So it, it doesn't feel as much of a drag, but also it's really worth their time. It's just like, Hey, but I mean, if a job's worth your time, you know, you might be a little burnt at the end of the day. Boss throws you good overtime. We got a nice little side gig after work. Yeah. Like, you're willing to grind, you know? Um, and I think a lot of these guys have that attitude. So they're, they're cool with it. There's a lot I would do for an extra million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> those guys. Uh, I thought one of the funniest was I think some people took it wrong as Jason Anderson said a joke like, oh, it's just a weekend off. What else do we have to do yeah. other than not race? But I, he said that in front of me and he actually meant that like uh, I jokingly said something after he's like, no, he goes, you know, he goes, I know we complain about the travel, but he goes, after I sit at home for a weekend off, he goes, I go crazy. I'm just like, I need to ride a race or do something. He he said it. it he doesn't relax that well on that, I guess. That's funny because <laughs> I thought he was completely lying i thought he was being sarcastic like i'm not into this so the fact that you're kind of you were there and we're able to talk to him it kind of made i guess i was wrong i, I thought he was just being a smart yeah. ass it, it came across as him being very sarcastic and yeah. snarky the first, uh, first time he said it but he said to me in an interview and he was like no he's like i like i sit at home for a weekend and i go crazy and we okay were still it's like yeah you complain about the travel until you sit home for a weekend or two and you're just not doing your thing and you're like hmm Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do I do with What do I do with my life? Yeah. I know nothing else. Let me ask you something. I want to step back for a minute to the LCQ, and you may not know the answer to this. There's an LCQ at each of the first two playoff rounds. Do you yeah. have to make show up for the first one to race the second one? Like, what if somebody misses the the LCQ? They're not seated, and they can't make mm-hmm. the first playoff you, round. Can you they... can show up to the second. Okay. One. It's not like you yeah. have to be at each. Okay. Correct. Yeah. You you can show up at the second one. Uh, just the fact you're racing in, it's a couple guys, you know, it's a group of dudes doing the only first race of the day going for two spots. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to be tough for yep. some dudes. I'm wondering like really how full the gate's going to be. Cause how many guys are going to be like, man, is it even worth me trying? Like, do I have a shot? I think a part of that will be how much is that LCQ purse? Is it worth dude showing up to at least try, even if like, they're like, oh, I only got like a 5% chance. Right. But, uh, yeah, if they if okay. they think they'll have, like, maybe a 5% chance there or something. But, uh, yeah, so they can race it in. Um, cool. The the actual points um, for these races is kind of interesting. So it's definitely a little bit of a, a show. 
let's let's just be straight up and honest here. The you know again we have the integrity of Supercross, we have the integrity of the Motocross Championships. This is a new thing. We don't have history behind it. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Let's make it exciting. Let's make it more fun for the fans to watch. Uh, so they've tiered the points where basically, even though it's three races, uh, you kind of always have a shot to win this thing. So yeah. your first race pays your standard points, 26, 23, 21, you know, 19, 18, 17, blah, blah, blah. It's like a typical Supercross or like an outdoor national moat per moto. The second round of playoff pays double the amount of points. The final round, LA Coliseum, pays triple the amount of points. It's a little gimmicky, yes, but again, we don't have, you know, it'd be one thing if they somehow did this at the finale of Supercross or Outdoor Nationals, it would drive people up the wall, and I would hate it. I'd be like, you're screwing up all the work these guys do beforehand, blah, blah, blah. Again, though, this series is about money, excitement. It's about rewarding the riders. It's about rewarding the fans, giving them something cool, giving us our own Super Bowl, per se. Uh, so yeah, we were joking about like a guy can kind of do so, so on the, the first two, you legitimately could be like a little bit off or just kind of a guy that's getting eighths and ninths, the first two. And if you can have a clutch performance at the finale, you actually can still win the championship and the championship is a million dollars cash. Um, so yeah, we replace the whole million dollars at monster cup but instead of having to win all three or anything crazy. Like if you just win the championship, you get it, yeah. you get big purse, all three of those races. But you also get a million dollars to win it. Um, they're going to pay down to, I believe, 20th in the championship fund of each class. 250 is 500 to win. 450 will be a million to win. And it's going to pay down 20th. I was told 20th and 450 will be 25 grand. So you could nice. kind of imagine the math in between. You know, second place in 450 might be like 250 or something. Third might be 100 and then break down like 10 grand at a time or something yeah. from there. Again, it's. It's not just the the whole monster up there. Oh, it's not just for the one guy that wins. Like it's actually really good for a lot of these guys lining up. Um, really worth it for them to go again. You know your top level factory guys. I don't. I've heard that from some of the OEMs they aren't putting bonuses into this. Mm. Um, maybe race wins, but not the championship. That's why they're putting up the million dollars from the promoter instead of the OEMs paying million dollar bonuses. Uh, but again, for your mid pack guys down, like there's a lot of really good money to be made here in three races. Um, so I think it'll entice a lot of guys out and that awkward chance that, you know, anybody, not anybody, but the, that final round's really kind of up for grabs. Like I, I, again, I was talking to Jason Anderson about it and he had an amazing year. We talk about it endlessly. Like this dude has had his best supercross season, even though he didn't win the title, he will agree it's the best he's ever rode, uh, his best outdoor season, but he didn't get either title. He's like a clutch performance kind of guy that could show up to this and win this championship yeah. and not win the regular season ones. I think there's actually, yes, we'll see the first year, but I think there's a decent chance that the guy who wins either if it's 250 or 450 SMX, like they may win it and not have been a regular season title uh, winner um, just because of the scenario they've put it in, uh, which I think is cool. You know, it's again, it's an extra motivation for these guys. Um, talk to Christian Craig about this a uh, couple of the guys there are like hey it sucks if you let's say you're super cross you're nine rounds in you get hurt okay not only is the rest of your super cross season and just done you're coming into outdoors behind the eight ball you might get to ride a couple times for outdoors so then your outdoor championships kind of and then you're thinking man why have I worked this hard this whole year and all that off season prep and I just blew it like I can't even contend for anything now but one of those guys still has a shot later in the year so Again, more motivation for the guys to get back racing, not not to push them too aggressively. I mean, still when they're safe and healed, but I think less of chances of seeing guys just being like, well, I'm screwed. I'm just going to sit out the rest of the season. And then the teams jumble around if they'll do a fill in or not and just kind of have a weak gate. Like it, it gives us definitely a higher chance of seeing these guys come back uh, to race and have a motivated reason to race, not just to roll around. Or again, they're like, OK. I got kind of kill it here and outdoors so I can seed myself in and then I'm going to race for that thing. So just think about the, the third race, the, the, fi- the finals, triple points, Justin Barsha, Oof. what he would do for triple points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's we, what I say. It's going to be, you might see some, some fireworks. Oh yeah. It's in, uh, again, I, I don't downplay it. it not call spade a spade. It's a it's a little bit of an entertainment race. Yeah, yeah. Um, still cool though. The sport I feel like needs it. We Spectacle. have a lot of legacy and other championships. We're not screwing with that. We get a lot of showmanship out of this one. We're gonna get a lot of excitement. Guys get to make a lot of money. 
uh, it's going to be really good on TV to watch. Uh, it's yeah. really cool to watch in person because yeah. it's not a set in stone thing. Like we usually, if you're the kind of guy that travels, uh, you know, it's gone. It feels like rare and rare, like joking with the web again. Some of these guys like, Hey, I know you usually probably like to be the guy to wrap it up like three rounds ago. And they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome to be that guy. This, this series will not allow for that. Um, it will make the finale actually a fun thing to go to because, you know, it happens all the time. We go to the finales and it's like, except for like Eli Chase this year, one of the first times we have that in a long time. Like we, even when the title isn't decided going into the final round, it's usually pretty far one one person's way to where sure. there isn't all you're waiting for is does he crash or have a, a mechanical like that's all it's really going to ruin this. Uh, but in this situation, it seems like we will always go into the final round with a lot of excitement and anticipation, uh, which is definitely good for for everyone. It's going to be an exciting year. So yeah, it's 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 going to be good for the sport. As uh, long as the guys don't get burnt out, it's it's going to be really a positive thing. So yeah, I'm glad they finally did it. Thanks thanks to uh, a little motivation maybe from some competition, we got this thing rolling a little sooner. <laughs> but hey, let's let's go. Yeah, I think <clears throat> a lot of people want to know like where the playoff system came from they're pretty honest that it came from actually like tv rights deals networks were pushing them basically to do this um they got some extra money from networks that's how they're funding the purse however same thing i'll be i'll i'll always be put a question mark over it hey would this purse have been that big if if world supercross hadn't existed i'm gonna say probably not yeah probably not uh the the format in a shape or form would have existed like this was the direction the sport was going they've been working on for over two years longer world supercross existed i've known about a a version of this for that long as well um because they had to talk to all the oems this is why feld parted ways with fim to work on this more closely with with mx sports so it's been in the works for a while it's not a complete knee-jerk reaction to world supercross but i definitely think world supercross has a, a part to play in the aggressiveness of certain parts of the series, which, you know, regardless of what happens between those two series going forward, uh, that's something I've always been hopeful of is that there will be a bit of disruption uh, in terms of the industry, the status quo, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, just straight up insanity. And now we're seeing the largest change we've ever seen in our sport at, at multiple fronts, you know, in, in one year, which is uh, for anybody is exciting. And, it's weird. Again, I know people, there are people that don't like playoffs. I understand it. Like I don't love it as in NASCAR, um, but a lot of other playoffs affect regular season champion. You know, they are the, there are the only championship they are. They are taking somebody's regular season run and possibly disrupting it um, where we do have a little bit of uniqueness here where, Hey, our, our championships are what they are. They haven't really been touched. They haven't really been affected. Um, it's allowing us to bring again, money and excitement. I don't see a real negative to us having a playoff. If, if, if they basically said, Hey, supercross and motocross championships don't exist and you have to qualify for this. And this is the only championship we're handing out. I would be furious yeah, right now. Yeah, that I would, would be suck. losing yeah. it. Yeah. I think anybody would. Sure. Um, but again, you got to like kind of separate and go, okay, this is a show. This is a separate thing. This is at the end. It's great for the riders, great for the people. It doesn't screw with anything. So I, I don't, I see some negativity around it that I don't fully understand. Cause it's just people like, Oh, playoffs are stupid. Playoffs suck. Screw the playoffs. Screw playoffs. How does it affect anything about our sport? Yeah, How is what, it doing anything negatively at all to our sport? I don't, I don't see it. It's basically going from two series to three series. We just got an extra series within a series. Yeah. It didn't change anything. Like you said, from what we're <laughs> used to, what we love, we just getting a little bonus at the end. So yeah, it doesn't, it's, there's no negative. I guess, you know, I'll, I'll backpedal here because I just put my foot in my mouth. How does it affect regular racing stuff? We talked about possibly getting more guys to stay in it all yeah. season. It could improve our regular season racing. It could actually put more guys on the gate. Um, it also does give us a little bit different storyline to talk about. I don't expect us to talk about it much in Supercross because we would still have motocross to follow. But once we get into the later part of motocross, it'd be like, okay, where are these guys seated for the ex- upcoming SMX? Who's on the bubble? The bubble spot guys will start getting talked about. Or again, a big name is like, hey, this guy missed over half a Supercross. He's coming into motocross a few rounds late. He's this far off the off the you know the 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 20th place seated position. He's trying to get there every weekend because that's really what he's racing for the rest of this year. So it does give us a little bit of a storyline to talk about. It could could affect, I guess, a couple positions. Some guys like how they race throughout the year. Um, I don't think it's going to 
<clears throat> it's not going to affect like everybody. Not everybody's going to be thinking about it all season. A lot of guys that they just focus on their championships will be fine. Um, but again, there there are going to be some select scenarios uh, where it will give some guys some motivation at the end of the day. So, okay, so how is playoff affecting our regular season? Okay, maybe it is. I think it's going to improve racing and improve how many guys stay on the gate all year and are willing to come back uh, midseason. So how's it affecting the regular season? I think it's affecting it positively. Yeah, in a positive way. And, and this thing may – I like the fact that we could see a champion that's not a normal champion. Maybe a guy that's consistent and then has two really good – the last, you know, the, the finals and playoff round two just has a, a phenomenal ride there, and all of a sudden you have Malcolm Stewart as a champion, or yeah, you know, maybe unlikely, but like a Dean Wilson, you know, that's but just some guy that you don't expect could win this thing. Yeah, I think four fifties are there. Um, all guys of a caliber, like you know, we start every year with the oh, any of these ten guys could win <laughs> thing going right. on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somehow it never ends up being that. It's always five or six. Um, no matter how good dudes are, like Webb didn't win a race this year. Sure. Mind-blowing. So we somehow stayed on the average. Uh, but yeah, there's guys that we we know are capable of winning, but can't get it done in a long-form championship in 450. So put them in this, they have a chance. And then the one that could be really exciting, because no offense to him, most of the guys in the 250 class cannot put together a championship to save their life. I think of the year Malcolm won the 250 championship. I think the lead of that championship changed like six times in the season. Like dude won it, lost it next weekend. Dude yeah, takes a chance yeah. to lose it the next weekend. It's only three races. It's combining all the 250 guys together. <clears throat> It'll be interesting. Like a, does a jet, which one does jet race next year kind of thing comes up. Like as long as you maybe for this first year, um, depending between him and a J coop, like having some really dominant 250 guys might affect it. But once those guys clear out, it could be really weird. Uh, Again, just because all of them getting jumbled together, 250 classes, more chaos. The different guy could win all three main events. Somebody who comes into the finale, ninth in points, legitimately could win the nine, win the whole thing. Like, look, Swole wins a race, uh, is one race is. Um, there's 250 guys that haven't figured out how to be title contenders yet in a regular season, but they can win races. Well, as long as they have two decent races and they pull it off at the third and final, again, they, they'd they be a champion. So the 250s could be actually the most weirdest hard to predict yeah. um, thing to watch. Can can Jet go win Supercross Championship, finish third in outdoors, and race both classes in World Supercross? Or the the world su- the Super Motocross World Championship? Can he race both of them? <laughs> no, I, I joked. I said that earlier. You can't, you can't race both. But dumb. even though he'll be 450 at the end of the yeah. year, I'll, I'll be curious to see what they do. I, I figure they'll leave him 450. I mean, he's got such a long career ahead of him. I don't think they're going to worry about the the opportunity of going dropping back down to 250 just to win a little extra right, money right, right. um i think he would say 450 realistically but that's a he'll he'll be in a weird position seated wise because he'll only have one of each championship so uh again though it's kind of weird like i like i almost wanted to see <clears throat> i'll be curious to see how the points work after the first year if those regular season points that really give you mean anything because of the double and triple on round two or three yeah. i don't know if that really affects anything I wouldn't also mind it seeing being somewhat NASCAR. I think I keep reverting to NASCAR and I don't follow it closely enough. So I probably shoot myself here in the foot. I think they give bonus points for, for playoff based on wins in season. If yeah. I think, don't, I apologize. I think you're right. My dad's a NASCAR <laughs> guy. And I think a certain number, maybe most wins, or if you get a win, you get an extra, whatever, five points or whatever it is. If you get a win. So yeah, there's, there's definitely bonuses for wins and, I don't know what else. There's other things I get. Laps I wouldn't maybe. mind. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that brought in as well. It does make it more complicated and harder to figure out and more whole track shots. and just kind of, kind of, huh? Whole shots. Most whole shots. Whole five shot. bonus points. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a lot. Well, oh no, you're saying combined, not per whole shot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> most bo- Whoever got the most whole shots, yeah. five bonus points. Yeah. So if you did, because like I think of if you did race wins or laps led in each season, that's something that would even heavier promote somebody to race those seasons. Cause you know, from our cross, same thing, like, Oh, uh, you know, I'm seated. Oh, if I go race pro moto and I, if you're a good, like dude that can win a couple of rounds, like, Hey, what if it's like three or four, po- you know, two, three, four, maybe five points per win. Yeah. Hey, what if I go win four more races <laughs> in outdoors like that? That starts me another maybe 20 points up like that. That actually could trigger guys more. And, I wouldn't be surprised again where this where this series doesn't have history or legacy to it. We're not really screwing anything up. I wouldn't be surprised if after the first year, if they're like, "Hmm, let's let's tweak the points," because it it doesn't 
like I said, it, it's one thing to change our regular season stuff. Um, that's, I think we see a lot of negativity and you lose a lot of your, your long-term fans that just hate to see the sport change and hate to see it monkeyed with. Right. Um, but by having that, there is just a lot of opportunity to change around, find a really good format, uh, without really affecting anybody's long-term vision of it because it has no history. It, there's nothing to really compare it back to after sure. the, just the first year after you've done it. Yeah. There'll definitely be some, there'll be some editing come 2024 for sure. Yeah. And that's our one. Like, I think there's a chance we see four playoffs the following year. I think maybe we drop one supercross and we go to an extra playoff race. I think that's potentially on the board. Um, I don't ever see them growing playoff extensively. Yeah. Um, I don't see them growing SMX extensively. I think it would be counterproductive versus what they want to do. Again, the purse money each night there's, I've heard something like 400 grand for a 450 class, maybe 150, 200 for 250 class. The championship purses, like it would be hard to expand that more races without devaluing those, uh, those purses. And also just again, keeping the integrity of the regular seasons seems to be very important to both promoters. Um, it's also very unique. The fact that we are a motorsport that has two different entities that are creating a third entity together. That's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. different. You think of like NFL, like NFC, AFC back in the day, but like they bought, you know, they eventually were bought out. Like it's not, not two different groups running it kind of thing anymore. Way yeah. They, they split those divisions. And speaking of the schedule, I asked you about this last night and you had uh, some thoughts on it right now. It's running into October. A lot of contracts run up out. You kind of had some thoughts on how they're going to deal with that. I think most simply just everybody's going to be professional about it. If we got a rider that's switching teams, um, I think teams will just be cool about it and be like, okay, well, let, you know, let's just retroactively extend your contract by two weeks and the incoming team will understand because what are they going to do with that rider to around in the playoffs? Like, yeah, it makes sense. So I think everybody will be gentlemen about it and figure it out for the most part, unless somebody has just really pissed off their current team and they don't <laughs> want out more and they're happy to get rid of them. Um, I think that uh, I guess there was talk. I missed it about them trying to shrink it back down the following year. Um, I look supercross. There is more breaks in the supercross schedule. I think this year than usual, it's usually only one weekend. I think we have two off. They might, they could get rid of some weekends off and we could shrink this back down and get it done by the end of September, which I could see them potentially wanting to do. I don't think they want to run this late in October or in the mid October. I think they would want to try to down the road get it done by the third week of September. Um, try to get us wrapped up so everybody can kind of <clears throat> move on because definitely a lot of contracts usually change as we see yeah. beginning October. All of a sudden, a slew of even stuff we've known about for six months is finally announced. That's just kind of how it works in our sport. Then everybody has October, November, December to start getting ready for the next season. Um, it does. I saw some people today saying, hey, does this affect uh, Motocross of Nation, Team USA participation? From my understanding... The guys from in front, they're on MXGP, are actually excited about us running a little bit deeper. I heard they want to run a little deeper with their schedule because they have so many rounds. Um, you know, they've had some issues with cramming the end of their schedule together. So I think it sounds like they're kind of happy to maybe move destinations into that first week of October. Well, this next year, it'll move late. It'll be like third week October. But I think the year after, aim for like first week October. I think they're happy enough to do that. And there's also some cool synergies going on there. Some people have probably heard the rumors. Um, the guys from in front and MX sports are working on a combined uh, pro motocross MXGP round in the future. MXGP wants to come back to the U S however, they do not want to try to find a way to fit in between our schedule and running USGP. They actually want to race with our guys. They've both promoters groups have like, Hey, this would be really cool. Destinations is cool, but people still say, well, I would just love to see all the best guys on the track at the same time. No team, no yeah. <clears throat> country involvement. Just let them race. Uh, so I think you'll see that non 23 they're working on for 24 um, so again, that's just another item. Again, we're talking about there's so much change in the sport, more movement than we've ever seen. Uh, it's amazing because you know this is stuff we've talked about for over ten years. Like it'd be nice to see this fine happy. It'd be nice to see them try this or that, and to do it a lot of it's coming all in it more at once than I would have ever expected. Yeah. You, um, again, you know the necessity is is the the birth of innovation, um, and there's a little bit of necessity with, with World Supercross happening and, and different things going on in the world. So it's pushing these guys to, to try new things. It's very interesting to see, again, like your your MX Sports, um, Feld, even in front, and all the OEMs are kind of all starting to see 
one way together, um, which I think is ultimately good for the sport. I feel bad for the World Supercross guys now because they're kind of on a, a little bit of an island in a sense uh, right. compared to the powerhouse of the industry. Um, we'll see what that does going forward. Uh, I, no matter what, I think more racing, more, more money, more rides, more jobs is, is a beautiful thing. Um, but we'll see it, it, I feel like you'll, this is, we'll see all these announcements, but there's going to be a lot more movement over, you know, the 2023 into 24 into 25. Um, we'll see other, other things change in the sport. Exciting times, man. It's what, what a time to be media, full-time media. Whew. I'm excited. Whew. I get to go to, Man, see, I get to see some of this time to quit. You picked the perfect time to quit digging ditches, man. Did I ever thank you for saving think, me think thank, back to months hey. ago when you were, when you were scared <laughs> to take the plunge, like yeah, to give up know, your, right? your, your, your city job. Do you regret it at all? No, no. I, I, I thank you, Michael Lindsay for changing my life. Not Steve Mathis. Wink, wink. Yeah. Who? Wink, wink. I need to sound by that, but uh, <laughs> no. So let's, let's give it the, the broad overview. We yeah. have, a 17 round supercross championship, everything's the same. We have one less outdoor, 11 rounds, but still the same championships. We have a three race series called Super Motocross. They are hybrid events. Uh, the third round is the LA Coliseum. The first two have not been announced, albeit we have strong suspicion that we could see a Charlotte Motor Speedway, a Circuit of the Americas, a couple other events like that are being rumored. They should be announced soon, but it's a three round playoff championship with a unique format. You have to be top 20 in points in either 450 or 250 combined from earlier in the season to qualify in. There are ways to qualify outside of that, uh, however, but that's the main focus. Those top 20 guys are seated, and these guys are going to race for an insane amount of money um, in a series that has a very unique point structure. That's, uh, I think, about the most simple way to put it. SMX is a new playoff championship. It's going to be our version of the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup, but it does not affect our regular season whatsoever. That's well, it. And then I ba bounce back and yeah. say it could with better <laughs> racing, more guys lining up, et cetera, et cetera. But in the the, the grand scheme of things, it doesn't terribly affect our, yeah, our regular it doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't diminish the, the regular yes. championships. It's it, all it's going to do for is the three hardcore fans that are very mad. And I understand that we lost an outdoor national and they're never going to let it go. And they're going to quit watching the sport. Oh, yeah, they're done. We lost one yeah, I'll never national. watch again. I'm never I saw somebody say that yesterday. Like, I understand being upset about it. I understand <laughs> like, hey, yeah, going down outdoor national isn't the you know, a lot of people want to see supercross strength before they see outdoor strength. I understand that. I get it. But uh yeah, it's not <laughs> the ones that are saying I'm gonna quit watching the sport because Paula two is no longer on the schedule. Right, right. They also were the we ones that, that, that they were also the ones that quit watching the sport when we went to a streaming service but they're still watching or, or whatever the reason was they quit watching last year. Yeah. Well, Triple crowns. I'm never going to watch hopefully, again. Hopefully they get the, the notification that uh, it's all in one home now. Right. I, I think that's uh, actually at the end of the day, that is all, all this other news is cool. Actually. I think I'm almost most excited about the TV package deal Same. more than anything. Same. Cause this, this last year, there's no way to sugarcoat it. It was not a, a pretty situation. No. Um, I don't think that Supercross TV schedule is fantastic. Outdoors, the streaming thing was a nightmare. Everybody knows it. Uh, so we're we're back home with with Peacock. But it's funny, even I, I look back at old form posts like Peacock. Peacock wasn't fantastic when it started. It had issues, but it's pretty dialed in. Everybody knows it, understands it. It's the home for everything. That alone should hopefully help people stay stay involved all year. They know where everything's going to be. It's a lot easier for them and their buddies uh, to sit down and watch it. And that alone could help the sport the most in viewership this year is just the, uh, all that being tied together nicely with a nice little bow on it. I think so. It's the whole, you don't know what you got till it's gone thing. And once, once we, everything fell apart this year, it's like, Oh my God, please like give me ESPN two back and Jerry Bernardo. At least I knew when it was coming on. <laughs> give me uh what was the one I said? The outdoor, the outdoor network. Give me oh, that yeah. back. I'll, OLN. Take <laughs> I'll take all in back. Yeah. That's what my racing. Just let me watch without having to reboot 13 times and, Go find a pirated YouTube stream. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, I think that about covers what we're going to cover. If uh, this will be on our our podcast feed, it's also going to be up on our YouTube. If you guys have any questions, throw it in the comment section below. Anything you want expanded on? Any questions answered? Any further about the series, the schedules, etc. Throw that down below, and uh, I will get to that eventually. But usually, get to to answering most of those. So. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like us, subscribe here on YouTube, uh, follow, you know, subscribe to our, our podcast network, the whole nine yards, and we'll try to keep you guys up to date. See you.